Salvete omnes! Welcome to this video lesson on Capitulum Altarum et Vicesimum, Chapter 22. Hic in pictura est canis. Uh, titulus est Cave Canem. So, Cave Canem, beware the dog, and this uh, image is um, a picture of a mosaic from Pompeii. Um, it's a very famous one that you can find at the um, Museum at Naples now. And there's a, if you go to the actual site in Pompeii, they have a reproduction of it in the actual house in situ. All right. In margine, in the margin, uh, es limen, limen, um, we would translate as foothold or threshold, uh, footstep, maybe something like that. It's the place directly beneath the door. Cardo, hinge, foris, uh, one of usually two sort of double doors, fores, um, and then verti is to be turned, in other words, to be moved in a circle, all right? Kawe kanem, kawe kanem, beware the dog. Janua wilai. E duo duabus foribus constat. The door of the villa consists of two, and here we could call them maybe leaves or something like that, um, two of the double doors, right? Foribus. Sub foribus es limen. Under the doors is the threshold. In quo salve scriptum est. On which salve has been written or is written. Salve, of course, meaning hello. Foris duos cardenes habet. The door has two, uh, and again, we could call them hinges, but you can see here in the picture on the side that um, this refers to kind of pins that would go into the um, door frame um, that the door would then uh, move on. So, fores duos carnes habet has two hinges, in quibus verti potest, in which or on which it can be um, turned. Cum foris in cardinibus vertitur, when the door is turned on the hinges, janua aperitur, the door is opened, aut clauditur, or is closed. Notice the tour passive endings, keep getting. Servus cuius officium est fores aperire. Um, the slave whose duty it is to open the doors, et claudere, and to close them, aquilam domini custodire, and to guard the villa of the master, ostiarius vel janitor opelator, is called a doorman or a doorkeeper. Okay, so ostiarius is coming from ostium, one of the Latin words for door, and janitor is coming from janua, the other Latin word for door that you first learned. And so these two are being some of the most common words for door. Uh, forest is another one that we're getting new in this chapter. So again, ostiarius, you could say doorman, and then janitor, doorkeeper. Essentially, those are synonyms. Sequis vilam intrare vult. Now look in the margin. Sequis, it tells you, it equals si aliquis. Now si, of course, is if. And quis means who normally. And aliquis means someone or anyone. So what this is telling you is that when you get quis, which would normally mean who, or also this would work with quid or some other kinds of question words, um, if you get them after si, which means if, then it's going to take on a meaning that's more like some or any. So if anyone, vilam intrare vult, wants to come into the villa or to enter the villa, Yanuam pulsat, he knocks on the door or she knocks on the door, et extra Yanuam expectat, and waits outside the door, dum janitor fores aperit, while the doorkeeper opens the doors. Eumque in vilam admitted and lets him into the villa. That is, lets the person in. 
Yanitor intra yanoam sedet. The doorkeeper sits inside the door. Cum cane suo, with his dog, qui propetam ferox es quam lupus, who is nearly so ferocious as a wolf. Notice the tom quam working together. Tom ferox so ferocious, quam lupus as a wolf. All right, itaque. And so, necesa est, it is necessary, eum catena vinciri, um, to chain him up or to bind him up with a chain. Catena. So, vincire is, vincire is the verb, fourth conjugation verb, to bind or to um, chain something up. And then catena is the first declension noun that means a chain. Uh, now, winkire, uh, meaning to bind or to chain or to tie up, you could also perhaps say, um, is to be differentiated from winkire, which has a short ere instead of the long ire infinitive. Winkire means to, to beat, to conquer, and winkire here means to bind or to, um, again, chain up. Right. Andea, earlier, in, in previous times, Domini severi non solum cane seretiam janitore suos catenis vinciebant. So earlier, severe or strict masters not only tied up or bound, chained their dogs, but also they chained up their, um, their own doorkeepers, janitore suos, with chains, catenis. Catena qua canis vincitur, the chain with which the dog is bound, ex ferro facta est, has been made or is made from iron. We keep getting a lot of these perfect passives, right? Like facta est, and uh, we had scriptum est up above. These are the perfect passives made from the fourth principal part of the verb, and then a form of sum s s, sum s s to sunt. Okay, so again, the chain with which the dog is bound is made or has been made, facta est, from iron. Catena constat e mortis annulis ferreis, the chain consists of many iron rings, qui inter se conjunguntur, which are joined among themselves. Now, it, we have to say this like this in Latin because there's no word for each other or one another. Those are reciprocal pronouns, which we have in English. They appear in some languages, but Latin does not have reciprocal pronouns, so it'll usually say something like this, between themselves. So, which are joined between themselves. In English, we would just say, which are joined to each other. Um, or with each other, perhaps. Anuli quibus digiti ornantur, the rings with which the fingers are decorated. Non ex ferro, not from iron, sed ex auro, but from gold. Facti sunt, have been made. So if I put that all together, rings uh, which uh, with which fingers are decorated are made not from Iron, but from gold. That would be a better way to say it. Aurum es magni pretii. Gold is of great price or of great value. Sicut gemai, just as gems or jewels are. Anulus aureus multo pulcriore est quam anulus fereus. A golden ring, anulus aureus, is much prettier than an iron ring, anulus ferreus. All right, fores e ligno factae sunt, sicut tabulae. The doors, again, fores are the two double doors there. We could also call them leaves of the double door. So the doors have been made of wood or from wood, a e ligno, just as boards, sicut tabulae. Lignum est materia dura. Wood is a tough material. 
Sed minus dura quam ferum, but less tough, less durable, perhaps, less uh, rough than iron. Can't take quite as much punishment as what this means. Qui reis ferias vel ligneas facit, faber appellatur. The one who makes iron things or wooden things, so iron things, race ferias, wooden things would be race ligneas, is called appellatur, a, and what would we call him? A craftsman, perhaps, something like that, or an artisan. Faber is a word for somebody who makes stuff, right? Deus Fabrorum est Vulcanus, the god of craftsmen or of artisans, is Vulcan. So this would include both, say, smiths and also carpenters for the Romans. Janua Clausa est, the door is closed. Janitor qui fores clausit, the doorkeeper who closed the doors, posquam Marcus intravit, after Marcus entered, Yam Rursus dormit, is now sleeping again. Janitore dormiente, with the doorkeeper sleeping. Notice Janitore and dormiente, which is a present participle, um, are in the ablative case with the short e um, third declension ending. So that's, thus, this is an ablative absolute. I like to do those with with, just to remind us what they are. So with the doorkeeper sleeping, that is under the circumstances of the doorkeeper sleeping, canis vigilans, the uh, watchful dog, Januam custodit, guards the door. Extra fores stat tabularius, outside of the doors stands a, and we can call him a messenger, the word here for the messenger, tabularius, means um, kind of a, a person who carries a tabella, tabella being a, a writing tablet here. And this is one of the Latin words for messenger. Sic appellator servus qui epistulas fert, so is called a slave who carries letters. Nam antea in tabuli scribebantur epistulae. For earlier, letters were written on tablets. And here we mean uh, on thin wooden boards. Is baculo ligneo fores pulsat atque clamat. He strikes on the doors, pulsat fores, with a wooden stick or wooden staff, baculo ligneo. Atque clamat, and he shouts out, House! Hey there! Aperi hanc Januam! Open this door! Num quis hic est? Surely there's someone here, isn't there? Alright, so the num quis, um, so quis by itself, of course, means who, but the num uh, is kind of like, there's surely somebody here, isn't there? Isn't there somebody here? So it's implying that he really expects there to be somebody there, but he's a little bit um, concerned um, that maybe there's not. Okay, so num quis he guessed? Is there somebody here, isn't there? Num quis hank aperit Yanoam? Is anyone going to open this door? How's to? Hey, you, Yanator, uh, doorkeeper, Queen Aperis, why aren't you opening? Dormisne, are you sleeping? So another um, new word here, queen, as they tell you in the margin, queen equals cur known. Why not? It's a great little word to know because it's a great way to, to answer somebody sometime. Queen, why not? Queen, queen. Uh, it's actually a contraction of, of kind of quid and ne, the ne that you get in question sometimes, and quid being an adverbial form um, that sort of means how or or, or why rather than the normal what. Okay, so why aren't you opening? Are you sleeping, he says. Cane latrante, here's another ablet of absolute, with the dog barking. Janitor e somno excitator. The doorkeeper is woken up, excitator, from sleep. Tabularis iterum fores pulsat magna voce clamans. 
the um, messenger again, it's room, uh, knocks on the doors, shouting Clemens in a loud voice, or literally a big voice, magna woke. But we can usually translate that idiom as in a loud voice. House, Yanetor, hey, doorkeeper, Queen May admitis. Why aren't you admitting me, letting me in? Putasne me hostem esse? Do you think that I'm an enemy? And note here also the word hostem, it means like an enemy in warfare. Do you think I'm some kind of armed enemy here? Ego non winio vilam apugnatum sicut hostis. I am not coming to attack the villa. Okay, opugnatum here to attack, that's the supine. Like an enemy, or just as an enemy, sequit hostis. Nick pecunium postulatum winio, nor am I coming to demand postulatum money, pecunium. Postulatum again is an accusative supine there. Tandem, at last, surgit janitor. The doorkeeper gets up. Now, tandem is a new word. It tells us in the margin, tandem equals postremo. Uh, you could also equate that to denique or demum, some other words that mean finally or at last. Quis fores nostra sic posat? Who is beating on our doors or knocking on our doors thus? Seek, meaning in this way. Inquit, he says. Tabularius extraianuam, the messenger outside the door, says, Ego pulso, I'm knocking on the door. Janitor intraianuam, the doorkeeper inside the door, says, understood. Quis ego, who I? Who, who's this I, right? You know, you didn't say your name. Quid es tibi nomen? What to, is to you the name? Now, that's our literal meaning, right? Tibi is dative. But this is how you say, what is your name in Latin, right? So, quid es tibi nomen? What is to you the name? Unde venis? Where are you coming from? Quid vis? Aut quim quiris? What do you want? Quid vis? Vis, remember, is the irregular um, U form of wolo, meaning want or wish. Quid vis? What do you want? Aut quim quiris? Or whom are you seeking? Tabularius, the messenger says, Morda simur rogitas. You're asking many things at once. Admite me, let me in. Postea respondebo ad omnia. Afterwards, I will respond to all of them, all of the different questions, right? Janitor, the doorman, responde prius. Answer first. Postea admiteris. Afterwards, you will be admitted, you will be let in. Okay, Tabellarius, the messenger says, Nomen meum non es facile dictu. My name is not easy to say. Now, dictu is an ablative supine. So we had the accusative supines above, like postulatum, meaning to demand, opugnatum, meaning to attack. You translate the ablative, here dictu, in the same way, you say to whatever, in this case, to say. So my name is not easy to say, dictu. Uh, it just looks different. And this ablative form will be used in different kinds of contexts, typically with adjectives like faculus easy or difficulus hard. Okay, so my name is not easy to say, dictu, ablative supine. It's new in this chapter, these supines. Tlepolemus nominor. I am named Tlepolemus. Janitor, the doorkeeper, says, Quidicis, Cleopolemus? What are you saying, Cleopolemus? Vox tua difficiles es auditu. Your voice is difficult, auditu, to hear. There's another of these ablative supines. Quod fores intersunt, because the doors are between us. Well, duh, just open the door, dude. <laughs> Right. Tabularius, the messenger, says, Mihi nomines Tlepolemus. To me, the name is Tlepolemus, or in more normal English idiom, my name is Tlepolemus. Sicut yam dictum est, just as has already been said. Tusculo winio, I'm coming from Tusculum. Erum tuum quaero, 
I am searching for or seeking your master. Now, Erum is the accusative of Erus. And as it shows you in the margin, Erus is a, an equivalent of Dominus. Dominus meaning master. So Erus, it's a kind of more archaic word. So you might want to translate it as like Lord or something like that. I'm seeking your Lord. Okay. Makes it feel a little bit similar. Yanitor, the doorkeeper, says, Si erum salutatum minis. If you're coming to greet the master, Melius est alio tempore venire. It is better to come at another time, alio tempore. Nam hoc hora erus meus dormitum ire solet. For at this hour, hoc hora, notice those are ablative, my master, Erus Meus, is accustomed to go to sleep. That is to say, he takes a nap at this time in the afternoon. Now, Dormitum, notice, ends with the um again. This is another supine. Um, he's accustomed to go to sleep. Ire Dormitum. Pos brevim somnum ambulatum exhibit. After a short sleep, he will go out exhibit to walk ambulatum. Now, just a little note here about these supines like dormitum to sleep and ambulatum to walk. They're made from the fourth principal part, which we've also seen mean something like having been verbed, right? Like, um, so for example, foctus means made or having been made. Um, but in this um ending or in the ablative u ending like dictu up in the first line of this page um it's translated to do x right and then one other thing about this you'll notice that dormitum ire and ambulatum exhibit the verbs the main verbs there ire and exhibit both have to do with movement so those kinds of um, supines you'll often say something for example caesar sends somebody to see, we soon, or uh, to watch, spectatum, or you might have somebody goes to help, um, and to help would be like you watch them or something like that. So it, it would be a supine form. So if you go or send or run to do a thing, then you will often have this kind of um, accusative supine form here with the UM ending. Okay, so in line 50, 51 again, for at this hour my master is accustomed to go to sleep. Post brevim somnum ambulatum exhibit, after a short sleep he will go out to walk, dende lawatum ibit, then he will go, ibit, another future verb, to wash, lawatum, okay, that is to kind of take an afternoon bath. All right, Tlepolema says, Si quis per hunc imbrem ambulat, if anyone is walking through this rain, non opus est, it is not necessary, postea lavatum ire, to go um, bathe afterwards. Well, this is a little bit of um, kind of his black humor. He's like, dude, let me in out of this rainstorm. At non vinio salutatum, but I'm not coming to greet him. Okay, now, Salutatio, the greeting procedure, is kind of a formal part of Roman culture, society. So people of lower social rank would go to their patron's house, their patronus's house, and they would, you know, knock on the door and they would ask to be, you know, given the chance to greet the, the lord, the master, whoever this powerful patronus would be. And then you know, they might do favors for him, and in return, he might give them handouts or things like that. Sometimes this meant actual money. Sometimes it meant he would give them maybe a, a basket of food. Uh, this kind of basket is often called a sportula. S-P-O-R-T-U-L-A, sportula. Um, so when he says, I'm not coming to greet him, it means I'm not one of his little cronies, his little hangers-on, his clientes that would come around greeting him to, to look for handouts. So don't think that I'm just some kind of parasite here. Tabularium, I am a messenger. All right, tandem, at last. 
And let's stop there because we have actually come to the end of our section one. So we will go into that tandem at last in our next video lesson. So I hope you learned a few things here and you picked up on the, the um endings of the accusative supines and the u endings with the long u for the ablative supines and the fact that both are translated essentially to verb. Uh, and as I said, the ablative supines appear with adjectives like foculus and deficulus commonly, and the accusative ones that end in um, uh, you know, they appear with motion verbs like ire, to go, or mitere, to send somebody to do a thing, stuff like that. All right, well, we will get back to section two in our next Walete Omnes.